Major support for these programs is provided by Bank of America Merrill Lynch and Perfect Building Maintenance, New York Community Bank, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company, Greenberg Traurig, LLP, M&T Bank, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chelsea Lighting. Additional support is provided by Briarwood Organization, Bruce Mosler, Capital One Bank, Cassidy Turley, C.B. Richard Ellis, Cushman and Wakefield, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, DDG Partners, Hal Fetner, Durst Fetner Residential, Friedman LLP, Accountants and Advisors, Flushing Bank, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, LLC, Genova Burns, Gian Tomasi and Webster, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Centurion Holdings, Corman Communities, Madison Realty Capital, Margolin, Weiner and Evans, LLP, Certified Public Accountants and Business Advisors, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Knight Frank, Sterling and Sterling, SJP Properties, Stonehenge Partners, The Wickoff Group, Urban American, and Ackman Ziff Real Estate, Aerial Property Advisors, Eastern Consolidated, Essex Capital Partners, Goldman Properties, Moynian Group, Must Development, RAL Development Services, The Spandrel Group, LLC, Rosewood Realty Group, Terra CRG, Triangle Equities. <laughs> They call it Jersey City. It's considered by many people as the sixth borough. There's some New York City developers don't like hearing it. There's lots of things happening on in Jersey City. So today I've assembled uh, four very bright, hopefully bright, intelligent guys who are going to tell us what's happening in Jersey City. My guests they include Ednardo Webster, who is a partner at Genova Burns, Gia Tomasi, and Webster. Ken Brown, who is a, par a principal at Urban Development Group. Uh, Bob Anticello, who is the executive director of the Jersey City Regional Association. And last but not least, George Vallone, who's the president of Hoboken Brownstone. But he's been in years in Jersey City. So you have been involved with Jersey City development for how many years? Uh, we left Hoboken in 2004 uh, when we finished the Maxwell House project and jumped into a project did you in have Jersey to, City. Did you have to get a passport to go No, they, from your visa is good. Your Hoboken visa is good in Jersey City. <laughs> Just jumped on the light rail. <laughs> so what, what are you seeing? So how come you left Hoboken? What, what are the opportunities in Jersey City today? Well, we like doing large projects, and we like doing industrial projects, and particularly we specialize in brownfield redevelopment. So uh, Hoboken is fairly close to getting built out. And it's difficult to get large sites. There are only a few left. So we got an opportunity to buy an old chocolate factory, the Van Leer Chocolate Factory, which started operating there in the 1930s. And uh, we bought it. We got a very good price. Uh, we started going through the environmental uh, cleanup process. We started going through the zoning process, working with Bob's department. And uh, we're literally six months away from groundbreaking. And what are you going to be building at the, at the it's, chocolate factory? It's two sites. It's a seven-acre site. There's a north parcel that's three acres and a south parcel that's four acres. So there'll be two buildings, 220 units on one, 260 units on the other. And the south site where the 260 is, we're going to build an acre, uh, one-acre public park. And what are the are these going to be rentals? They're going to be rentals. It's the only financing right now is for rentals. Now, didn't you have another site that you sold to someone else in Jersey City? No, that was Hoboken. Oh, that was we Hoboken. sold the Maxwell House site to Toll Brothers. No, no, the, the one that we spoke about at lunch. That's the Van Leer okay, site. That we're we're going to be joint venturing with a new equity fund. Okay. We're just finishing so, up so those Bob, negotiations. Where do you, you know, you're involved 
with the regional association. What's happening in your mind? I mean, because Jersey City, you know, if we, if we really go back, <clears throat> part of what happened and helped Jersey City was Sam Lefrak, who was very angry many years ago with Lower Manhattan. Battery Park and, City. Uh, right. In Battery yeah. Park City, and uh, you were a kid at this time. Mayor Kyle. And, and he, he said, I'm not going to build anymore in there. And he was sitting, looking in Lower Manhattan, and he says, Newport. And he went there and he basically bought this property for. Well, next you know, to he bought it. No, I wouldn't say next to nothing, but by the time this, the, the uh, federal UDAG grant, Urban Development Action Grant of $40 million was, was uh, given to him, his basis was really competitive to, do, to go forward. And he's been. It was a big number at the time, but I guess. Yeah, you know something? Um, the LaFrac family and that project was really a, a game change for Jersey City because prior to that, you know, we, we, we were the quintessential gritty industrial city. And then what Sam and Richard and now the, uh, the, the kids have been able to do is really show the, the city as something completely different. And from that point, you know, every project in Jersey City, including Ken's project and including George's project and so many that we do, really just stand on the shoulders of Sam, who's no longer with us, because if Sam doesn't go in there and make that investment, um, you know, who knows where really what happens. The city, you know, would kind of linger along, but Sam made the investment. And just to kind of give you an idea, uh, they, were, they were designated developers in 1980. And since 1980, they constructed 4,700 housing units, 1.2 million square feet regional mall, uh, an additional uh, 700,000 square feet of retail, 4.5 million square feet of Class A office space. Um, they have somewhere close to, um, is it 800 hotel rooms, 15,000 parking spots in the 215. So should we change, room? you know, the same way that Sam Lefrak went to Queens and they, they called it Lefrak City, maybe we should change the name of Jersey City to Jersey Lefrak City. I oh, mean, yeah. I mean, listening to the... Well, Lefrak well, City West. Yeah, well, I think I think if you if you really look at what's come up around it, it really is a new city. And, I mean, I think that that was a... Was part of the issue that the city had was that I think Sam did not want the connotation of Jersey City to be kind of dragging what he felt was Newport, then, and the politics entered the equation. But since then, you know, that's one of those early public-private partnerships um, that, that worked, and it was trend, and really it was transformational for the city of Jersey but, City. Uh, you know, with what George just said, you're talking about public-private pro partnerships is what you're doing together yourselves, yeah. working over there on a brownfield. Now, you, you grew up in New Jersey. You went to... Uh, High school in Jersey City? Went to St. Peter's Prep in Jersey City, yes. St. Peter's Prep in Jersey City. How do you see, and I mean, and you've been involved with development in Jersey City and Hudson County over there. What are you seeing happening in Jersey City in general? Well, I, th I think, you know, I think in the last 30 years you've seen a dramatic change. Um, when I was in high school, um, we'd go to Paula's Hook and uh, play hockey and basketball um, <clears throat> at a pretty much abandoned park. Uh, today, Goldman Sachs' tower sits on that lot. Um, so that's a billion-dollar investment that sits at the corner of, of, of that Colgate redevelopment area in Paulus Hook. Um, and I think, you know, that, along with Merrill Lynch and Lord Abbott and some of the other investment banks that have, you know, put their, their offices there and their back offices there, I think that they've kind of created kind of the other end of the sandwich from Lefrak. Um, George is trying to expand the sandwich a little more by, by going to NoHo. But I think if you really look at what's happened to Jersey City, it's really become a very different city than it was 30 years ago. Do and we still have, you know, you said industrial. And, and it's interesting because when I start my new show um, in September, uh, the New York Business Report, I've been trying to do a show on manufacturing. Mm. And I can't find manufacturing in New York City today. Sure, sure. I mean, I no. found a window company who manufactures. Is there is there manufacturing and industrial still taking place in Jersey City, guys? There, there's not much going on. I mean, there's some warehousing. There's some value. There's some what they call uh, you know value added manufacturing, where essentially the pieces are coming in from overseas and coming into the port area, so they're just and they're being assembled uh, for tax purposes and then shipped out. You're seeing the same, I'm sorry, Bob. You're seeing the same thing that happened in New York. You have a higher and better use for these properties as opposed to manufacturing, and it's cheaper to put them someplace now, else. Now, when you and your colleagues originally built the A, which was 2004? 2004, 2005, yeah. Now, 
how has the, the, the world changed in the past eight years well, in Jersey City? From 2008 to 2011, obviously everything went, went way down. Um, and we actually, we actually sold the final units at the A through 2009, 2010, which, which, which held up pretty well. We probably ended up averaging just under $600 a square foot when we sold that project out. It has started to come back, but I, I think, as you mentioned, Jersey City, particularly on the waterfront, tends to be referred to as the sixth borough. So you have, I say, three tiers of, of a rental market, let's call it. You have Manhattan, uh, particularly some of the areas like such Chelsea, Lower East Side, where you have, let's say, rents in the high 70s, mid 70s. Then you go to Williams, Williamsburg or Brooklyn, where your rents drop down into the high 40s to high 50s range. And then you have Jersey City, which is sort of your third tier. So it sort of trails along New York City as well. So as New York City and their rental market has recovered, Jersey City has followed behind that now, as well. Now, but over the last couple of years, <clears throat> what Bob was talking about with Leferec and other situations, there has been a lot of new apartment houses been built in the last five or six years. Murray Kushner, the Weisses, other yeah. people. How, oh. well, no, not a lot, though. You really, no? I mean, you, you had the Monaco, which was the, f the first new rental building completed probably in four years, I would say. Yeah, the Monaco, the Monaco was, those um, two towers were, um, were new that came out. There was 225 that uh, Grand, which is a uh, Cary and Iron State uh, um, there. But I think what Mike's referring to, when you, when you look at kind of Washington Street and you look at the right. kind of density there, mm -hmm. you know, you look at uh, Brian Fisher's project, which was a condo, which was a Crystal Point, which Crystal is a Point. spectacular building um, there. You look at what Brian sold Liberty Towers for, which was a significant number there. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting because I think the, the guys kind of hit on it. You know, New York is this world 24-hour city, 24-7 city, and part of Jersey City has been appended to that. Mm -hmm. right? So it divided exactly. and divided so has, down. has Jersey City become a 24-7? No, but part of it is. Parts of part it. Of it part of it. Parts of it. The, 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 downtown. the downtown is, yes. Yeah. But, but I think what you've also seen is the reason some of the transactional building didn't stop in Jersey City was because many of the people that were coming to the table in 2005 and 2006 with condos simply converted them to rentals. Mm -hmm. So that kept some momentum going, and the math still worked. Uh, so even in the downturn, you, store, you still saw people building, albeit slower, but you saw the number, you saw units still being put online. Now, the interesting situation <clears throat> for Jersey City was the, <clears throat> the implementation of the light rail. Yeah. How do you see that now? I mean, is are you going to have light rail at NoHo? There is north a, of the Hudson? Uh, north of the Holland Tunnel. Holland Tunnel. North of the Holland Tunnel. Or Soho, south of Hoboken, whichever you like. <laughs> NoHo. But there's a, there's a light rail station stop right now at 2nd Street in Hoboken. That's the closest one to this redevelopment area that Bob's agency set up where my project is. But there's a scheduled station stop at 18th Street. It's scheduled. It's unbuilt as of how, yet. How expensive is it to, to build a light rail stop? Fifteen million. I That's guess. about fifteen million. Yeah, I, I think the number is around. So, around that and for for my viewers, what does a light rail do? I mean, it gives them an access to uh, to the path to, portal. To, to the path portal. Yep. Yeah. And how how, how often does it, does well. it uh, tr go? Back going to rush hours. That, li that line goes from yeah. that line goes from what Hoboken all the way out to Bayonne. Right. And that's that going south. It travels south all the way, way up. All the way out okay. to North Bur through North Burke. Okay. Yeah. And then ultimately we will connect um, to a park and ride out on, on um, and, and what is the cost of uh, uh, a ride on the, uh, the light rail? It's, it's a buck. It's, uh, it's a buck. Now, you were bringing out something before when we were talking prior to the broadcast with regard to the uh, the new uh, train station in Lower Manhattan, the Calvert. Calatrava, Calatrava, yeah, and, and that's that. We're really excited about that because the Trade Center is roughly ten minutes outside of Journal Square, and the thing about Journal Square is to keep in mind is that 16 million people pass through Journal Square every single year. That 8.3 used the path, and the path in Journal Square goes to 33rd and goes to um, uh, Lower Manhattan. But another 8 million people use buses and jitneys. That's 16 million people. From Journal Square, which is where we want to grow the city. The waterfront is fine. It's going to take care of itself. Mm -hmm. But Journal Square, 10-car platform, uh, path to um, uh, Midtown and Lower Manhattan, very important. Ten minutes gets you into the Calatrava. From Calatrava, you walk out. It's a world-class transportation facility, two stories, retail. Through, uh, essentially, a retail tunnel to Fulton Street, get you anywhere in New York City. So it's one of these seamless two-seat commutes, whereas in the old days, 
You went down to the Trade Center, you took sure. the escalator up, it took you a while to, to do it. Now what's happened there is they have vacant land sitting roughly 10 minutes outside of the Trade Center and 18 minutes outside of 33rd Street. KRE, Kushner, uh, Murray Kushner, saw it, got on a path when the land was available, took it to 33rd, clocked it at 18 minutes. They took it back roughly 18, 19 minutes. They said, this can't be. You can't have vacant land 20 minutes outside of sure. 33rd, and it's still sitting vacant at this price. They did it again. They came back. They started to, to assemble the, the site. The site's now fully assembled. It's going for, light, for um, um, site plan in the next 60 days. We're now working on a financial model and that works, which would, will, will include tax increment financing. And we're getting, we're very excited because we think Murray's going to be the first guy to actually go vertical in Journal Square. And by the way, on the core, right on the path, the FAR is a 28. So, you know, those FARs are significant FARs. We basically, a lot of density. A lot of density. So how high could, on, how high could it build? Well, easily 40, uh, 40 to 45 stories, 50 stories. If he came to us and wanted to go 60, there really, there's no limit to what he could build there because the path station is so robust. And, and, right. and there's discussions actually right now with the Port Authority to revamp essentially, yeah. you know, that path station to really. Oh, it's a major transportation. Right. Now, what are you planning to build in your site? It's going to be a rental building as well, 35 stories. And how, where, physically, where is that in Jersey City? We're probably equidistant between Exchange Place and Newport on Washington Boulevard. So we're, we're, we're considered on the water. So, so how do you, so you're considered on the water? Yes. And how do you get to the, to the train station? It's uh, to the Newport train station. It's a, a four or five block walk, five blocks. It, it, it's a seven minute walk. Well, there's a light rail stop right there as well. Now, Newport train station is different than the Journal Square. Yes, train it, station. Journal Square is is one is one stop further out west from so from you're, Newport. You're, you're, you're really referring to the Pavonia. Yes, Pavonia. Yeah, it's so, correct. He's yeah, in New York. So I, so, <laughs> yeah, so, what, so what I'm hearing is you know the residential market because of the, the the difference which we didn't bring up but we brought it before the show is substantially less expensive for someone to live mm -hmm. in jersey that, city correct, yeah. than Absolutely. the city well, what kind of rents are we talking about george and Ken? I think we're talking anywhere from half to 60 percent of the rents well, in manhattan yeah, just looking at, at, at numbers here certain parts of manhattan you're starting at 75 dollars per foot going as high as 100. 90, 95, 100. Right. In Jersey City, the Monaco, for instance, I, I wanted, and they're getting the highest rents, I think, in Jersey City. They're probably in the 40 to $44 range. Yep. So it, it's, it's significantly less. My project will be in the 30 to $34 foot range because right. I'm stick built, four story. We can deliver that at a lower price. But you know, the, what, what you're really hearing here, and, and from Bob and from the other guys talking about Jersey City, it's, it's an example of what makes Jersey City such a special place. It's, there's really two things that make Jersey City special. One is obvious, the other not so obvious. The obvious one is its location and its infrastructure with the path system. But the one that's not so obvious is what you hear when you hear Bob and, and these guys talking about it. And it's the willingness of the city to work with developers. It's a very developer-friendly place. You've got expert people running the redevelopment agency, the, the planning department. They've got, they'll work with you. They'll design zoning to fit a, a plan so that you go in, in, a, in an as-of-right zoning application. You've got a mayor and council that listens to their paid experts. So many times you have, pl you have paid experts that recommend certain things, and then the politicians do wh whatever the heck they want to sure. do. That's very not the case in Jersey City. No, we, we were talking it's cohesive. The, the week before, I did a show on New York City development. I had a Jersey, New Jersey developer, I called Goldberg. Yeah. And we, we were talking about, you know, it's very difficult to develop in New York City residential because there are there are limited or no tax abatements or tax incentives. Oh, without a tax I, abatement, I'm, I'm doesn't hearing work in Manhattan. over here, you have lots of incentives. Yes. Uh, now you have an urban tax credit, which has been available to, for residential rental buildings in the past. I mean, I may not there may not be much left over here. There have been major tax uh, in lieu of tax uh, programs in Jersey City. If we didn't have that, do you think any of these major things would take place today? Well, it would devalue the land. It would, yeah, it has to come out of one of the variables, and that would be the land, yeah. because your, your cost of construction isn't going to change based on whether you get those incentives now, now, or he, not. Now, here's a question. You, you have offices in Newark and Jersey City. What is the 
office environment in Jersey City compared to the office environment in other parts, in Newark and other parts of the state? Um, I think the office market in Jersey City is, is relatively robust compared to the rest of the state. I mean, if you look at what's happening in Morris County, you look at what's happening in uh, Newark, um, you're, you have uh, much higher rates of vacancy. Well, the suburban office market yeah. in, in the suburbs of New Jersey is, is, is getting crushed right now. Now, uh, I, I do know that, you know, Pearson uh, is relocating, I believe they're relocating to Hoboken, but they, I believe they looked at Jersey City. Um, is Jersey City still getting a lot of the New York City offices, you know, companies who, who are thinking the, of relocating? The, the Jersey City gets a look at everything, uh, and whether it's Matt Cowley or the LaFrac family, mm -hmm. they, they get a look at it. And then Jersey City is also unique in the sense that if you need a, 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 a 40,000 square foot floor, you can't go to Newark. You can't right. go to uh, Princeton. You're going to go to Jersey City where yes. you can get a trading floor for 40,000 uh, feet. Um, Jersey City's, look, it's 19 million square feet of Class A office space. It's larger than Orlando. You know, people don't realize it because it's sitting right there on the waterfront. And that's why, you know, there was a time when I was in private sector and as a leasing agent, we'd go to the trade center, we'd canvas tenants. That was a wide river. To get a tenant to leave the trade center to come to Jersey City was a very wide river. That's not a wide river. That's a, that's a, it's a, it's a seamless, um, uh, it's a, it really is seamless as it relates to Jersey City and New York. And Goldman proves it every day. The ferry from sure. Goldman, uh, sure. uh, downtown Jersey City facilities and World Trade and, and World Financial Center. And a, and a lot of that has to do with, uh, goes back to just when a city lost its industrial base, they could have sat there and sulked and or tried to find another way to get manufacturing to come in. But what happened along the way is that we, we got very lucky, and we got lucky in this regard. We got a medical doctor, Dr. Jordan, who came in, who's a reformer, and started a planning office. The agency was around since 1949. Um, and they started to look at these vast kind of industrial tracts of land and how we can best put them to use. And they came, and, and from that, you had Newport, you have the, the area where you have um, uh, Harborside. And Colgate had such a, 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 a deep history in Jersey City. Colgate, um, as a steward, really put a plan in place that is a world-class plan. And that Absolutely. made Go Goldman came in and Hartz came in, Brian Fisher came in, and that made all that possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but one thing that in order to make a community a 24-7 community, you need certain other things. You need schools. I mean, it's great that you had a prep school over there. You need some good public education schools. You need uh, retail, adequate retail, you know, with, with supermarkets and other amenities for people to live there. Uh, you know, it's nice to have young people move in, but you need some older people to move in to, to remain in there. What's that, happening with that is regard the one, to... That is one thing, I mean, the, the high school, St. Peter's Prep and even St. Anthony's, that'd be two... St. Peter's Prep, especially, is one of the best high schools in northern New Jersey. The one problem you have, and you have the same problem in Brooklyn, you'll have couples that will live in Jersey City and even start a family there, but once their kids hit a certain age... That's, like, that's what I'm then, bringing up. Yeah. Then they'll, they'll, I, I, they'll start I, I, to I think, I think you're seeing um, a lot of pressure uh, being placed locally, uh, politically, on the Board of Education right. to yeah. become accurate. better. It needs to be, um, and that and, needs to improve. And I think a lot of that pressure is coming out of those couples because they don't want to leave Jersey City. Mm -hmm. um, and so right. uh, it's starting at PTAs and, and, and local kind of, you know, citizen groups uh, in the downtown area. I mean, those schools that are, the downtown schools are very different than the schools that are, you yeah. know, in the rest very of the Very good. And the McNair, the by the way, McNair, which is the public high school, is the right. best high school in the state. Now, I believe, I, it may have been five, six years ago, I, I think I had Jamie Lefrak on my show. And I also know I had David Barry on my show, and I believe both of them, who are Lefrec is Newport and the other part, and Barry, you know, at that time they were the applied company, like, Ryan yeah. Stone, they both said to me that in order to get people to live there, they were giving away the charter schools or the schools for free. They were building. Them. They build a, They were building they, a charter they, school. They, they well, were building <laughs> sure. these institutions. Well, they, what, what they what they did was they allowed charter schools to have a very low rent in some of the properties that they had right. um, control over. And you've seen a proliferation of charter schools. You've seen a proliferation of Montessori, and you know, and and now some of the private schools are starting to grow. Some of the parochial schools are starting to be repopulated. So you're seeing educational alternatives being sought out by by by, by folks who are trying to stay in Georgia City. And yeah, I think we, in the next 20 years, 
next 25 years, definitely, you're going to see that education in Jersey City is not a reason to leave anymore. And now what about retail? I mean, you, you know, it's I, I've said this about Long Island City in my show. Long Island City is another redevelopment in certain aspects similar to Jersey City. It's a good, it's, it's a good comp to Jersey uh, it's, City. It's a good comp. The negative that Long Island City has had is they've, they've never had any you know, supermarket. They don't have a supermarket. They still don't have a supermarket. And the, the other uh, situation that they ha didn't have was they hadn't, didn't have enough restaurants. You know, the adequacy. That's actually, is, Jersey City, that's not the, the supermarkets in Jersey City are actually focused on a waterfront because mm -hmm. what happened is that was where you were able to, to build 45, 50, 70,000 square feet. So supermarkets, we're rich. We don't have a, a, a um, uh, look, if we have the space, and we do in NoHo, for example, Whole Foods will come in. Uh, Fairway was interested in. That's the in next on, step on, on to get those types of retailers. 18. That's definitely the next step. But keep in mind, step. it's. But you have Pathmark. You have shop, shop, shop and shop. Well, you have Stop and Shop. Shop and right. A and P. So Shop right, right across the street from from the. You have plenty which of shopping is, uh, opportunities. One of the highest grossing shop yeah. rights in the state. If you look at Newport, though, a third of the shop is in Newport. Come from New York City. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it kind of kind of goes both ways, where people are coming out of uh, Manhattan and shopping. My, my my joke when I used to do you know shows on the state of New Jersey was I said you know the, the reason that the retail survives in New New Jersey is that there were no sales tax on clothing. So many of the people, which is true, they'd come to New right. Jersey to buy it. And I believe Jersey City, in certain sections of Jersey yeah, the City, enterprise zone, the, the, the enterprise zone, zone, the, zone the, the, sales tax the, taxes, the taxes is 3.5%. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're at a 3.5% tax, as compared to an 8 and eight and 3 quarters percent yeah. tax, it's a big, a big difference. difference. Yeah. You know, it's a substantial you know, difference. You know, Mike, one thing I wanted to, we suffered downtown because we didn't have the density. When uh, Columbus Towers were, were built and, and Cary built uh, uh, Grove Point, it was interesting. On, on my way here, there was 12, I counted 12, sign, uh, 12 tents set up on the Grove Street Plaza, the piazza on, on Grove Street from the downtown SID Special Improvement District. Um, and this goes on 12 tents for essentially what would be a farmer's market. There's a, there are all these workarounds that are now becoming uh, permanent mm -hmm. uh, there, and it's amazing on how vibrant downtown has, has gotten and how diverse downtown has, has gotten. Um, you know, between as a hipster community, there, there are young professionals. It's a very diverse group, and they add this kind of little piece, like a jambalaya, to the, and, and the pot has become very, very rich. What about the hospitality, the hotel industry? Well, I know you have a couple on the waterfront. I mean, are there are there other hotels being built in Jersey City? Yeah. Exchange Place will have a, a, a new hotel, um, and uh, we're working in, in Liberty Harbor North with a, um, a hotel group. Hotels, the problem with hotels is financing 50 to $100 million hotels, but I think ultimately what what will happen is the hospitality industry is... is good, 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 good question that relating, and uh, I think anyone want to bring it up, with regard to how easy are the, are the, are the banks when it comes to financing in Jersey City? Um, I think that the banks are looking for... Uh, are looking for projects that uh, pencil out. I mean, and I think the rental projects pencil out. Um, I think you're starting to see more and more retail uh, kicking the tires, and, and they're starting to come in. Um, I haven't heard a bank say that we have a problem with the financing. I mean, the, the issue with Jersey City is can you make a deal on the land? I, I wish we could talk more, and maybe <laughs> in the new season we will, but I think um, I've got a better idea, and my guests and my viewers will have a good idea on what's happening in Jersey City. I'd like to thank uh, El Nardo, um, uh, Ken, uh, Bob, and George, and I'll see you next week. Yeah.